I V M. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey. The language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, tread carefully. But listen, yaar. Don't be so conservative. I'm going to start with one of my uh, most favorite quotes in the English language from a very young age, which is, oh hell. No, no, that's not it. This is it. If you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. That is the principal difference between dog and man. Mark Twain, my grandfather, Samuel Langhorne Clemens, wrote this many years ago. I just love that quote. Because it completely explains the relationships you will have going forward, both with animals and humans. And the human cynicism is completely warranted. We'll get into that in detail with one of my favorite people who I've never met. But the moment you say you're a dog lover, we live in this world where I believe there's lots of hatred and love. Some of us who think we are left of uh, center and uh, uh, more liberal in nature can't be bothered with petty, silly things like racism and casteism and communalism. But we do have our own prejudices. I hate anybody who doesn't like animals. But this lovely lady who's joining us right now is not only a testament to humanity is alive and well and a few people may have been made by God, but she's written a love. Well, she's put together. Let's put it that way. Put together a book called The Book of Dog. It is like an anthology. It actually is that of very personal accounts by many people, some of them very rich, and their relationships with dogs. जिस तरीके से हमारे माँ बाप ने अपने करियर की सीढ़ियाँ चढ़ी थी वैसे आज के जमाने में तो पॉसिबल है ही नहीं गुरु क्योंकि हमारा जमाना इतना कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है आज क्या नहीं है कंपटीशन है सोशल मीडिया है इतना इन्फॉर्मेशन ओवरलोड है कि करियर का टेंशन ज्यादा होता है उस पर काम कम टेंशन लेने से कोई फायदा तो है नहीं क्या करते हैं ठंडे दिमाग से सुनते हैं प्रोबेशन से प्रमोशन तक पॉडकास्ट को हर सोमवार जहाँ पे सिर्फ प्रैक्टिकल बातें होती है आपके करियर की और कौन करता है वो मैं आपका होस्ट अभिनव त्रिवेदी ये पॉडकास्ट आप सुन सकते हैं आई पॉडकास्ट की वेबसाइट ऐप या फिर किसी भी अन्य पॉडकास्ट प्लेटफॉर्म पर लेट मी ब्रिंग इन राइट नाउ हिमाली हिमाली सोदी इज राइट इनफैक्ट इज इन मुंबई इन आर इन आर सिटी uh we'll find out why there's a launch of a bookstore which we thought had died and we went to the funeral a few years back because i live very close to it but they're relaunching crosswords and so himali is down because that's the business side of her as well himali firstly thank you so much for coming on this show uh we've been corresponding firstly you t- you've been corresponding with me i'm a child of the 50s you know like i like pen and paper i read everything down pen and paper you know i mean i have to go through whatsapp and computers and emails and so difficult for me but so i apologize for my tardiness at replying and everything else but i have to tell you very proud to be associated and i never use the word very proud in myself very often so very proud to be associated with the book of dog which is your anthology thank you so much for asking me and thank you for your piece it's one of my favorite pieces in the book yeah well you know that's because i can spell and some of these guys can't but <laughs> it's 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 a fantastic collection of very interesting people from all uh, you know strata of not strata so much but definitely different walks of life and uh, let, let, let's let's begin with you firstly what's your dog connection how did you become such a great dog lover and go back and tell us how it all started so it's interesting yeah. actually because i wasn't born a dog lover i was ah. actually, yeah when i was growing up i know when i was growing up i was petrified of dog um i was petrified of most things i was a very shy child you're a convert and, Yeah, I'm a convert. So someone someone told me you're a late convert, which I think fits this perfectly well. But having my first dog, getting being fortunate to have a dog's love, was a transformative experience for me. Um, I think it was life changing, as you would understand. Um, from a place where dogs used to terrify me, to have my life circle around this very lovable person in my life was just so transformative. and then i think what also happens is once you get a dog into your life you just open up to this whole universe of dogs right so you make friends with dog parents you eventually get more dogs you you do dog speak so i think all that sort of converged in and my background is in publishing so when we think about stories we want to tell books are a natural medium um so the idea for the book was there for a while but i think it's only around we'll talk about that in a bit but i think like i said i mean dogs have been transformative 
and I think my most profound relationships in life have been with some of the dogs in my life, all the dogs in my life. So you would understand. Right. That. Yeah, I know exactly. So I feel a little bad sometimes when we dog lovers or animal lovers meet and the you know have a certain conversation and it sounds bizarre to some other people, especially when you're discussing the facets of a puppy or something that you know and how you're you know completely demotivated because you haven't seen your dog for nine days, you're far away or whatever, and they just can't empathize. Or when a love, uh, when a pet passes away, for example, I remember one yeah. of my friends asked me, my other friends, he's not eaten for four days. You know what's wrong with him? He's just a dog. You know, I'll never forget that line. Is just a dog because it's so yeah. it, it really hurt. And even yeah. now, it almost makes me well up. I mean, you can't say that. You just can't yeah. say that to someone who's had a relationship because you just won't understand. And you don't even want to explain it to anyone. You're like, I'll only talk to fellow dog people and, you know, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't want to talk. I just disassociate myself with people who are disconnected. I've become vicious that way. I don't know. It's, it's a Parsi <laughs> thing. With old age, it has to go somewhere. Couldn't join a terrorist outfit. So this is where we go. Um, <laughs> I love talking to dog lovers, you know that, I, I mean, the book is testament to that. Um, and I think you're right, going back to the point of grief when it comes to losing a pet, I think that is one of the most isolating experiences we go through because others just don't get it. And I don't understand why they don't get it. I mean, when you have such a profound relationship in your life, it's natural that the passing is going to be one of your most terrible moments in your life. But yeah, there you have it. There are dog lovers and there are those who don't understand and who I'm hoping some are waiting to be converted to dog lovers eventually. Yeah. I, I You know, again, how to explain to anyone, I don't even want to try. I, I, I But I only hope that this book, because it's in interesting and everybody's got their different you know perspectives and points of view, even people who have no interest in animals will probably just read it for the read first. And then maybe uh, be curious about what is this fascination that a dog seem to have with so many different people from different sort of backgrounds and setups and family dynamics, etc. Um, uh, I've got so many favorite stories about how dogs bring love. I used to see a girl once long ago. <laughs> that sounds horrible. But yeah, many years ago, there was this young girl and her grandmother really didn't like dogs. And I, I all my life, you know, I would take the dog with me wherever I could. You know, I, that was the law. So dropping, picking, those kind of things. Dogs always in the car with me, you know, going to get an ice cream or even going to a place like Crossword. I'd sit, sit out with the dog. So um, I remember going to a house once and for some reason, reason yeah we had, I had to pee or there was some reason i had to go up i didn't want to leave him in the car so i said can i just bring him up for a little just five minutes and then i'll go you know leave immediately and because this whole grandmother thing we you know wouldn't take him up normally so she said okay i went in i went to her bedroom to use the loo and of course uh, my dog uh, at that time luci luciano he just wandered off on his own german shepherd and then i came out and she said where's luci and i said i don't know i you know, I went to pee. So she said, but uh, please don't tell me he's gone to my nani's room. And I said, uh, I have no idea. So we, uh, you know how these things work out in the end. It's like Murphy's Law. And yes, the, there were like three, four doors and he's gone straight into this one. And and she was chatting with the dog. He had come <laughs> straight up to her. This woman who hated dogs, she was fascinated oh. with him. He was just sitting there looking at her uh, mouth to mouth almost. And she just found him wonderfully handsome and interesting, you know, majestic. And just, you know, they just connected. And you then... Yeah. By him, Ali, she kept asking uh, the girl to bring the when Cyrus coming over and will he bring Luchi? It, it just went from this like from black to white, you know, it just went completely or just connection, just alone. Nobody said a word. The dog went into the room on his own and they became friends. It was like a yeah. miracle. And I think that's one of the things. I think people who don't connect with dogs is because they don't have the experience of meeting, you know, a dog or spending time with a dog. I think they just don't understand dogs. So there's this alien presence you just think of the things that could go wrong but you haven't really given yourself or the dog a chance and i've seen that so many times that you know once you get this dog and you make the connection with dogs there's no going back that's it but you have to then have that right environment and be introduced to a dog to be able to form that connection i think i mean well barring the rwa uncles who go around saying ban dogs and don't feed dogs and whatever i think most people actually when they say they don't like dogs don't really know what they're talking about because they probably haven't had that exposure to a dog yeah it's a, so how uh, can you not like dogs yeah if you know dogs how can you not like them i think it's like it's yeah. a bit like the whole i hate to see hindu muslim issue sometimes people just live apart and have no idea and just say you know i don't like them i don't like their way and all that yeah. because of no exposure 
a little bit yeah. of interactivity and after some time you realize there's not, not that much difference and sometimes the food is better you know you give a chance <laughs> to another community uh but yeah so so coming back to the whole thing now let's just talk about you others i'll go on ranting about my uh, all my problems with people who don't like animals so you started liking dogs almost as an adult but then you became a immediate convert uh, as well uh, when did you have this idea that let, let's get people i mean it's a great idea when you think about it the moment you told me i was like wow what a great idea get people to write little anecdotes about dogs from their perspective and point of view from across a whole cross section of people so i think you know one of the things is that when i was growing up i was reading a lot of books around dogs so whether it was snoopy or it was you know all the all the all the characters that you grew up snoopy with. was standing on two feet sometimes yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bit hard to explain or, yeah or snowy and tintin ah uh, uh, so, snowy you know there yeah. were all those all scooby doo there were all these dogs these adorable dogs that you have in literature but growing up clearly i was probably reading the wrong books but i didn't read that many books around dogs um and the books that i read with dogs except for maybe books like mali and me which is one of my favorite reads but the books i read around dogs the dogs were very much a sort of a side presence um and i thought that it would be actually nice for us to make dog center stage of this book you know i mean so the humans in this book as you'll see are very much the loving but supporting cast it's the dogs um it's 45 stories which center around the dogs who've made a huge difference in our lives and when i reached out so my first list of reaching out to people were because i come from books uh, writers i knew who were dog parents and you were in that very first list when i reached out and said listen i mean do you just want to write about anything to do with a dog in your life which has made this impact on you and then as it happens the universe grew people started suggesting other people um one of the other things i did want to include was stories from um animal rescuers or people who are in rescue because i think that's also a very important part um of this dog universe um and then the community just grew yeah i mean people started suggesting other people then someone said hey why don't you ask this person he's got an interesting dog story it came to a point where the editor i was working with was getting slightly worried because every week i'd say listen i think this is a nice story to put in and what's also interesting is the different forms that the stories took you know so while there were essays there were photo essays there's there's one dog arunava sinha's dog who's done haikus um so it's it's a very interesting vibrant universe and it's unpredictable in the sense that pretty much how every day with a dog is you know there are surprises every day and that's really how it happened i think what was really heartening was also how everyone you included immediately jumped at the idea um because i think people don't really talk about their dogs or write about their dogs so much but they really want to i mean these are stories they want to exchange um himali you have no idea i know in publishing but they call us to uh, write about things which like can you write about independence day can you write about parsi new year can you write about uh, today's uh, you know you know uh, something color day i mean these are ridiculous things you want to just pretend to be interested so i'm so happy yeah. to write about something that i that you know is always on my mind because i yeah. i, I got to tell you that um, if the dogs weren't around my family wouldn't talk to each other we have two at the moment uh, both rescue one saluki was abandoned by a breeder left in alibag mm. and one mm. uh, desi dog of mukdol hound descent who was found the female left alone to die in a market in chondi uh, mm. so yeah so you know my wife has now got into this whole thing about we have to only rescue dogs so although yeah. i've always had gsds unfortunately or fortunately no racism implied but uh, this is where we stand so if anybody has a gsd that needs a home and we can quietly leave them <laughs> where my wife will think the gsd is coming in and wow you know then we're stuck but yeah, yeah. yeah would you say that because one of the interesting things about um and important things about the this this um companionship with dogs is the stories around breeders is the stories around when people get Horrible. dogs yeah they don't really realize what goes behind and i didn't my first dog was actually not i mean it, he wasn't a rescue dog simba wasn't a rescue dog and i didn't really know what went behind that so i think part of this whole storytelling around dogs was also and that's why you also have stories of animal rescuers is i think you also need to know the reality of what it is and what you're doing when you go and want to just buy that cute dog in the window or get that breeder dog you know i mean there's a lot of pain and heartbreak and also to come back to the breeders the thing that we found out is many of them are just not into animals it's a pure business thing yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know it's like a vet who doesn't like animals he's done it because they failed the other yeah. medical course and the, you know i mean those people should be uh, uh, in my list of capital punishment unfortunately it's, just, it's all commerce yeah. 
it's yeah. all it's all commerce so how do you uh, there's no empathy and there's no question of talking to them about anything uh, yeah. you know you expect that the dog breeder is a person like you who's now breeding dogs hence you know you're talking to yourself but it's not like that at all and yeah. it's horrible the cruelty and all that once we i don't even want to think about it because i get just get still get really enraged and unfortunately can't do anything except pound my desk like a mad monkey to use a phrase uh, all the monkeys are lovely too little more dangerous um so so let's let's get back to the collection first let's talk a little bit about the book and then we'll talk a little bit more about personal insights and all so tell us about a few of the writers the ones you know and yeah. uh, what they've written about so it's got a collection of 45 contributors and um initially it was a lot a lot of the people who had contributed were writers because that's the universe i know and that's the people that we reach i reached out to um so right but what's interesting like i said apart from the names is the different kinds of writing so there are essays there are photo essays there are haikus um one of my favorite stories well actually who am i kidding they're all my favorite uh, but one of the stories that i really like is this um story from my friend Sean Morton who lives in the UK and she talks yeah. about this thing that a lot of people don't know about which is breed specific legislation you know which is when um you actually have four breeds which are banned and if yeah. um if you know the the council finds out the dogs are taken away and put to death and i thought that was absurd i thought this was like completely dystopian when i first heard of it but i think i mean what's also interesting about this collection is apart from the stories which touch you in a personal way there's also information about you know uh, about rescues about breeding about dog racing one of the pieces is about dog racing which again is immensely cruel but it exists so i think it's important for people to also get a sense of what really happens but most of the stories in the book are actually very very personal essays um about dogs which have touched people so whether it's shobha day and her gongli or it's gulzar saab and his pali um he's done a really lovely poem where he says he and his boxer pali had this great connection uh, this very very you know very special connection and he had another friend called pali pratipal pali and this friend comes home and so gulzar saab is sitting there wondering now how do i say pali what if both of them respond yeah. and what if both take offense so yeah. <laughs> there there are a lot of fun stories here um there are stories by ruskin bond there's your your four dog commandments like i said are really fun really irreverent but i think also hold a profound truth um you know i mean those those are really good commandments and i like how you said dog's attention span is lower so it won't be 10 it will be 4 um and then there are stories like from people like minika gandhi uh stories from atul sarin so it's a very wide universe there are photo essays by sunita purwala of dogs on marine drive uh there's a photo essay by divya dugar who according to me leads the ideal life she travels with three dogs and a baby in train compartments around the country so that's a lovely photo essay so it's it's a lot it's it's a lot of different kinds of stories but at the center of all or most of these stories are those dogs those very special dogs it it, it begs a question also i think uh, himali if you think about it all civilization not just ours uh, have dogs in the culture in a sense you know you just look back thousands of years etc we brought them in they became very social with us etc etc and uh, indian uh, scriptures and all are filled with uh, you know there's enough examples of all that but somewhere in urbanized india and more urbanized india than rural india i think rural india still uh, love the animals uh, you you can see that with some of the rural people who come and work here who look after the dogs better yeah. so, something happened in the last 200 years i don't know victorian england or what happened exactly where we sort of got disassociated lots of people have been just disassociated from dogs and i i see that i i it's like dna is now programmed to be fearful and the normal curiosity which say some of us have some of us don't have and that has to be reprogrammed you know from the childhood see the kids yeah. uh, you know while some kids are so curious and want to run to the dogs like we did there are those who are fearful because of first impressions from their parents or whatever's in the dna and i think that whole thing has to be reprogrammed so shall we uh, destroy the population and start again yeah <laughs> that's a very good idea cyrus let's do it let's do it yeah. and let's let's make dogs the commanders of a lot of these things let yeah. them play the rules i think it will be a better world that's also now that we mentioned that's another terrible thing about neuter all the time you know effort to stop the population or oh, i feel really terrible yeah. doing it but we do it because we don't want you know all the other options that are out there uh, what could you yeah. bring bring up something you mentioned which is um, i think you talk about pit bulls and you know um, these carne corsos and the, the big breeds who have got a bad name but you know honestly speaking it's the fact that they have potential to be ferocious and powerful no doubt but they're also very loving and affectionate and brought up properly can be absolutely 
the same dogs so yeah. can't, why 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 did the worldwide legislation against these dogs ever look at the fact that it's the human factor which is more paramount or more important you know no, absolutely absolutely and i think every dog has the potential to be loving or the potential to be i okay so i'm one of those who's not very very i won't say i'm very objective because i i i think it's never the dog's fault that's one it's never the dog who's to blame it's either the circumstance or the upbringing or the stereotyping that we do so we have so many no, people you, you, this is not an emotional comment this is a very logical comment if you ask me because logical. you're making the dog live in your society with your rules so yeah, how is it the I dog's agree. fault anyway oh, it's never the animal's fault because you it's want them to the fall yeah yeah and also dogs are not malicious dogs are not out to bite you just for the pleasure i mean that's yeah. that's only humans right i mean it's only humans who have this sort of agenda dogs are they will be they will respond to their circumstance and how they and i have never heard of a dog who will have a drink with you in the evening then fire you the next morning you know the things yeah. that we can do in terms of yeah. cruelty with uh, coworkers and colleagues and all is on another level altogether dogs are pretty black and white if we, if they don't get along they really are and i you know i mean going back to your point one of our dogs is a rottweiler and you should see people's responses around him and he is the racism yeah it is yeah. it is it is really it is, dog it, it is that version only yeah. yeah and he's the silliest sweetest dog around i mean he's afraid of everything i don't know why but that's just i mean he's just a <laughs> oh, sweet a scary rottweiler how cute is that yeah. well custard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like okay let's break the stereotypes here let's not give him this macho or whatever name you know let's call him custard um it's also named after one of um, the, the same friend shawn shawn's harsh dog was called custard and i said when we get a rottweiler we're going to call him custard and so custard is a sweet adorable dog but you should see the reactions of people around so i think there's a lot of uh, inherent biases which unfortunately have no basis so yeah i think i mean i just wish people would give dogs a chance and just give them that loving environment and give them i mean even if it's not a loving environment at least don't don't expect them to be this this fierce mean machine because they really are not you know a friend of mine going to rottweiler point a friend of mine has uh, found a he found abandoned uh, pitbull who had been badly beaten in the forehead was cut badly with a sharp instrument etc this dog is so loving him ali you have no idea i mean he licks your face dry perfect yeah. stranger he loves everyone he's so loving and i, I can't for the i can't think why anyone would have inflicted such pain on him you know it, it because he's not even like a bad tempered sort of dog who's had you know whatever uh, got a few issues with people or whatever nothing like that and pitbull muscular big looking and all that but he's like custard he's just yeah. a he's a pr king he likes everyone and he wants to go to everybody and lick them exactly like, without without holding back no no i get it and uh, unfortunately you know pitbulls are also used in dog fighting right so that i mean it just the kind of cruelty we inflict on dogs is sometimes it's it's staggering i i some it's a very dark place to go down but it does exist and if you don't talk about it then it continues to exist but yeah i mean i think the stereotyping just has to stop a, a quick word on, on manika gandhi uh, for a second i'm a huge fan a lot of people say it's all politics and this and that, but i've i've seen steadfastly she's you know stood up from whatever position she's been uh, as an mla or above or when she was in the cabinet uh, she's always like put a foot forward and you know uh, which i think is another problem we have to we we sort of face that legislators uh, legislators and people in the know have to make stronger laws for animal cruelty like yeah. here in mumbai apparently it's 50 bucks bail where you you yeah. beat a dog or hurt yeah. a dog badly and somebody files a i mean 50 bucks and then they're out it's ridiculous i mean it is absolutely ridiculous but it actually sarah i think it actually starts with the idea of purchasing a dog you know i mean there are no licenses there are surely if you're going and getting a dog in your home like if you if you see the um, animal welfare for instance when they rehome a dog they do home checks and everything Correct. but other than lots of diligence yeah. yeah there's diligence there but there isn't diligence in someone wanting to go and pick up a dog from a breeder and getting the dog home and then they realize okay this is a living thing it's going to grow you know it's going to need food it's going to need affection and so you know slowly you see that attitude change which is really sad um but i think i mean yes you're absolutely right they have they have to be stricter laws and i think there also has to be awareness a lot of times people are not aware that there are things like you know people say dog ko lift mein mat lao now yeah think you can do that you know uh, they say you can't you can't discriminate and uh, let me let me add to that point here quickly so that nobody sends us messages also when they say menials uh, i would i hate the word servants uh, it should be outlawed uh, you know vendors etc should not use the lift i find that preposterous It's it's really, it's, it's, how how can you how can you segregate lifts 
Everyone uses a lift or nobody uses a lift. I, I don't get that. How can you say, do that? Yeah, that, that, that is exactly what we do, right? We compartmentalize as humans. We compartmentalize based on what we think, who we think deserves what. And I think that's like really ridiculous. But there it is. So yes, I mean, coming back to Menika Gandhi, her piece, I don't know if you've read it yet. It's one of the most heart-rending pieces. Because here you have this impression of someone who's like, you know, um, very sort of, I won't say shrill, but very loud, very out there talking about animal welfare. But you have to understand that behind that is the story of someone who really very deeply cares about animals. And each animal, each dog uh, makes that difference to her. So I think it was very important to get that voice in to say, look, I mean, this is why I do what I do. So, I mean, okay. yeah. Himali, you're a friend. So can you do me a favor? Please tell her that if she wants to start her own political party, where obviously uh, the manifesto will be all about animals, etc. I will bring people. I will scout the country. I'll do Padhyatra after Padhyatra. I'll actually work for the first time in my life. And I will help bring her to power. And we will have a leader <laughs> who puts animals first. Oh, that'll be so much fun. Imagine that'll if we can have amazing. new laws and we can just catch people. Oh God, there'll be retribution. It'll be like, you know, after, <laughs> well, let's pick yeah. people up. So just yeah. for naming your Pomeranian, <laughs> you know, those terrible names. No more dogs will be called Tommy, Moti, Raju, Biscuit. All those names have to go. Uh, I'll, I'll allow yeah. Simba. I saw Simba and your biodata and a few others. Yeah, Simba is like the, like the human name Aryan. Uh, yeah. uh, back in the 90s, late 90s onwards, it just became such a big name. Everybody started calling their kid Aryan. You know, yeah, I, I know too many of them. I know it was Rahul, and then it became Aryan, and then Correct. Simba. Simba, the first, I think it was Caesar. I remember all Caesar. These- yeah, the first German Shepherd that came to my house when I was five was a Caesar. You're right. Yeah. This, these are these are smaller laws. First, we get the really evil people are doing evil things. These small laws also to be looked at at some point. Boss, name the dog correctly. Be very careful. I don't know why that happens. Everybody wants to do a Simba. Everybody wants to do a Caesar, uh, a Tommy. I mean, it's always the same. Uh, yeah. No, it is true. So there's this really funny story about this um, friend of mine who works in Friendicos. Sandrali, who's also one of the contributors. And Friendicos is this uh, welfare organization in Delhi. And so they rescued this dog. And the guard at that time did not know okay, whether it's a male or a female. So the dog was called Mukesh. And it was a female. And mm-hmm. poor <laughs> that poor dog, through her life, went around being called Mukesh because no one knew whether it was like a male or a female. But and, how hard uh, was that to find out? <laughs> but I don't know. I, 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 didn't, is, get into, I didn't get into this. <laughs> exactly, and he's obviously no man of science. All he had to do is put the doggy upside down. I mean, it takes one second. Yeah. So there you so, have. Uh, there you go. You have Mukesh. But yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree. Tommy and there are some other names which have been doing the rounds, and they really should be retired now. No, and my pet peeve, which I write about and do my stand up a lot of times, also, uh, this uh, Arpit has mentioned it immediately. Uh, Zeus, the, the dog oh. I mentioned. We, we thought it was GS, and it's a real story, you know, because for months we've been we were going to the Oval this back in the day, and everybody would very friendly Labrador. We'd all say GS, 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 because that's what the guy would call him. Because there's no way on earth he was educated in Greek uh, history and mythology and all that. And so, you know, when the lady finally turns up, the great owner finally decides to descend on us and take her dog out herself. And she's most perturbed because we're all shouting, kids are going, yes, yes, you know, kids are noisy. And, and everybody's Labrador being such a friendly dog, very popular. And she's just almost lost it. What are you calling my dog? It's a very haughty, you know, westernized sort of lady. And I was like, uh, GS, because that's his name. No, that's not his name. It's Zeus. I said, we, you know, poor Raju is walking the dog. I mean, he did his best to communicate the name as from Zeus. It became GS and it's, it's there. And I just, it's just it's one of my favorite really- stories. How- yeah, so there's a, there's a very funny story of Shobade and her Gongli. And Gongli is, of yeah. course, named after this Chinese actress. And, you know, I mean, yeah. they were all very, very happy that they have this Gongli in the house. Mr. Day is a big fan of the actress. Mm-hmm. And suddenly they turn around one day and all the, uh, when they go down, they say, Acha, aap to us ghar se hai na, jaha pe Ganguli hai. So Gongli yeah. <laughs> is known as Ganguli in that entire building. So there we are. So this is the problem because we don't live separately in islands of, you know, uh, just six people who understand your subculture, etc. We have to find some commonality in names. So hence, we have understood why Biscuit, Tommy, Muti, Raju, uh, etc. Even Simba is acceptable because everybody can say the name all said and done. And the communication is easy. Just give the dog a lot of love and the name doesn't matter. At the end of the my father would give uh, uh, names of his favorite tenors from classical, Western classical music. So we've had Lucia. Wow. We've had Rufo, it's even earlier than that. We've had Volpi, and these are lesser known uh, tenors uh, from wow. way back when. Yeah. 
So, but luckily they were easy to pronounce. So, uh, you know, um, not not too hard, not too. You know, we could have gone for some really ridiculous names and suffered, but no, that didn't happen. My dad also. In my defense, name. most in my defense, most of our dogs um, are rescue dogs and came with their own names, so we didn't want okay. to change that. Um, yeah. Except Custard, of course, was a very deliberate naming of a very sweet Rottweiler. And yeah, but I'm just worried about Custard because I'm hard of hearing now as I age. And I was thinking, if you say Custard from far, supposing you're watching the dog, and so you just pick up the name, it may sound like the abusive word, which rhymes with that. I'm just thinking, <laughs> you know, that'll cause confusion. I never thought of that. Thank you for introducing that thought now. I'll be very, no, very... Uh, <laughs> listen, be careful when you're out with people because there are also... I, I like a whole group of people who I call the semi-dog lovers. They're really curious, but they're not confident enough. But you can see that. So I always encourage that because you can see them looking. Then I always go and say, ha, ha, lagao, uh, kuch ne karega, that kind of, you know, that yeah. initiate that kind of dialogue. And then it goes further from there because that curiosity is always positive. It's never negative. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's that's one of the things we can do to spread the gospel of dog. But well, want to thank you as you're going to break uh, Himali for your content. I think it's a superb book. One of the few moments I'm proud of in my life. Uh, this in the uh, time when I didn't hit the lady on the sixth floor with my car while reversing because she was 81 years old at that time. If you're 75, I would have run over twice because she takes so long to cross. But <laughs> I, I was nice. Um, but this was this is this is superb. This is my uh, people who follow the podcast zone. This is my pet thing. Literally, no pun intended. And you know, I can just go berserk. I only get violent over animals. I never ever get physically violent. Otherwise, I'm a complete coward. I'm the first guy to run. Somebody attacked my wife. I'm like Aisha. All the best. Love you. And I'm gone. It's like that. But you do anything to a dog or a cat or anything like that and I don't I just become like a titan it's the only time when I get some sort of character and strength I think one of the things you don't mention Cyrus and this is something I um, heard about from our friend Abo Daras and from a few other people is how much you also support animal welfare I mean I didn't know that you do so much for welfare for stray dogs and I think it's really commendable I think one of the other things that's very commendable about this book is that I wanted all royalties to go to animal welfare and charities and everyone without batting an eyelid said yes. And we're talking about some really serious writers, some artists, you know, and everyone said, yes, animal welfare, go for it. We'd love to do that. So I think it's it's remarkable. I think dogs do bring out that side of us. You know, there is that. Yeah. Imani Abo, uh, they use our office as well. Uh, yeah. He's on another level. I can't, you know. Uh, people listening, you have to understand. Abo is from a normal middle class M Mumbai environment, uh, a gold medalist, MBA student, you know, all that corporate sort of background and everything, and would have by now been a head of an MNC. He's yeah. that kind of person to yeah. turn your back on the material world and then just help uh, stray dogs at the beginning of your career. I mean, that kind of. I wish I had that spiritual strength. Uh, you yes. know, I really envy envy him because I don't. Yes. I, I still have to, you know, buy things and survive, etc., etc. So this is always the second thing we do. But to do that, I mean, you know, this is like a Mahatma sort of figure. So although he dresses really badly, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping we can bleep that part out. Uh, <laughs> no, but, no, he's fine. But he, no. he, he. Uh, I mean, you know, one of the things I mentioned in the introduction is exactly what you say that to be an animal rescuer, and it's not just about the fact that you always ha you're always worried about where your next grant is coming from, how you're going to feed, how you're going to take care. But also the fact that you see so much cruelty and you carry on. I mean, I'm not sure that I would have that strength. You know, and and that. negativity because they try to get money. And it's always, imagine you can't get money for uh, yeah. humans, for, you know, orphanages, for all these things. So down in that whole hierarchy is yeah. animals. And down is the dog with, with all yeah. the cultural mysticisms that are put over it. So they have to sit there with a begging bowl and be last in the list. Yeah. Yeah. So please, yeah. anybody watching who's rich and likes animals, just put aside some money for for animals and for dogs especially, and a little yeah. bit give Himali. Uh, Thank what you, the hell is? I believe in commissions. You must take a bit. We are Indians. Jugaad karna padega. Without that, we'll not survive. Yeah, ten percent goes straight to you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just say for your pet dog. We we'll call it that. <laughs> oh, by the way, taxes have been paid. It's uh, April first, and so that's done. So please don't bring up finances. Uh, we have to take a quick break. Himali stays with us. Silvery will join us, and any. Anybody's got questions for the next half an hour after that, that's your time to ask us. Dog lovers only may apply after this break. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vinny talks to Tanisha, Shweta and Ashish. They are the founders of the sex toys and wellness business, The Sangya Project. They'd recount their journey from an Instagram page to a full-fledged queer-owned business. On The Fighting Goat, Arjun and Somesh take a look at why MMA fighters are choosing to go back to pro wrestling, want to learn an interesting perspective on the act of letting go. On The Habit Coach, Ashton shares three questions that will help you forgive others. 
on Marathi Kit Ki Tund Deshmukh's Draw a Connection Between the Disciplines of Science and Literature. And on Tere Mere Raste, Keshav explores the city of Strawberry Farm, San Diego. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. And don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. Also, remember, we're on YouTube. You can check us out on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube and get a list of all the YouTube channels we have active at this point. I'd also like to make a quick note that we're doing a small listener survey and it would really help us if you could fill that out. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance and India Water Portal. Thank you so much for making this possible. Back here, uh, Silvery joins us. Also Good morning. Hello, sir. Uh, he's a... He's a, he's an animal person. He's a cat person more than a dog person. But uh, no, no. I, I would say I like both. Uh, uh, but I'll you're looking after cats. Yeah, the because really there are more cats in my building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't want to uh, piss off our guest. Huh? What is this? <laughs> but uh, no, no. I just have more cats in the building who I end up feeding. Uh, but I am I love dogs as well. It's But but uh, Himali, just quickly, before we get into uh, other things, I forgot to tell you, there was one name which I loved, which is Prerna Bindra's Doginder. You know, yes. because yeah. because I with my Punjabi friends, I, I do this a lot naturally. You know, I just change the names with the Inder at the back, like yes. Siminder. You know, I just add it. It's just fun. Uh, yeah. And I thought it was just I saw that name and I was like, wow, Prerna should get the Padmashri. This is great. <laughs> Finally, a name India can be proud of, and they can see it. Everyone can see it. You see, now so these ways you go and say, Doctor, I'm going Doginder. How tough is that? No more juice, juice, GS. I mean, no more, no more struggle for the guy. Can you imagine? It becomes like a, it becomes like a humiliation for him to bring out that name which he can't say, and he knows he's going to, you know, screw it up. So when I think back, it was really cruel in many ways. Doginder, that's the name for India, and Prerna should get a medal for that. And Doginder was the love of her life. It's a very lovely piece, actually. It's the last conversation with Doginder. Yeah. So again, let me just advertise the book of dog uh, Himali's uh, contribution of uh, put, putting together dog lovers, dog parents. So where's the damn camera? And uh, Prerna Bindra is the one we're talking about. Is on her dog Doginder. Please read it. Some of these things are so beautiful because people are being so open. And again, if you have that empathy factor, it's like reading poetry because you really, really get it. Um, and if you don't, just give it a try. Give it a try. Maybe yeah. you'll just understand this world is more interesting than you think. Sometimes I think you know people just don't see the little beauty that we have. Tell me yeah. honestly, guys, what is the most beautiful thing in the world? I was thinking about this on my drive here to talk to Himali. I was thinking, what would like would it be like a Brian Lara cover drive or Ursula Andress coming out of the water and Doctor No or you know uh, a Beatles lyric that you know stays in my head forever? And they're all beautiful things, but I don't think it anything compares to a puppy. I just love a bouncing puppy, yeah. you know, bounding around curiously. I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. It is oh, a man. delight. It is, it is the most beautiful thing. You're right. You're right. And the other really beautiful thing is, so when a rescue dog starts to trust you, um, you know, and we've had some dogs who've come with a, quite a lot of, as issues. you have, yeah, issues. And then when that change happens, it is just such a profound moment. I think it's amazing are, because yeah. Peter, our dog, exactly what you said, this is exactly what happened. He had been beaten and also he was so, especially of males. He was okay yeah. with females, sexism, but male humans, he didn't like at all. <laughs> Took a yeah. long time. He's still scared of males, especially, uh, you know, working class males for some reason. Is all Whatever the issues are, they're imprinted in his head. So that is still there. And I'm just thinking, but uh, with my wife, it's the opposite, you know, completely. Uh, we've been married 22 years and she doesn't trust me at all, you know, I mean, for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Unnecessarily spoiled our moment of poignant <laughs> <laughs> poignancy. Uh, okay, Silvery, uh, so over talking to you. about talking about dog names. I remember as a child, I had a friend uh, in school who uh, whose father had a very good sense of humor. I, I remember we used to hang out with his father and all. Like uh, after school, we used to go to his house, and his father used to crack a lot of jokes. So he had a dog and a cat. And I think now that this thing has become very common, but at the time I hadn't uh, heard of this. Uh, the the cat's name was dog, and the dog's name was cat. And uh, I used to find that very funny all the time, <laughs> uh, just as like a, I don't know, it was just <laughs> That's pretty funny. clever. I don't mind that. Yeah. Yeah. Because that'll, that'll bring yeah. a smile to anybody's face, you know, when you hear yeah. the yeah. first name. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't like dog, yeah, I don't know the dog and cat are complaining about the whole species. Thing <laughs> They're not. Yeah. 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 But it's just, you call the cat and the dog always comes. That was always like very yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. We had a... We had, 
where I live, we have this uh, Nas cafe. Now it's gone. Immortalized in the 80s Hindi films, you'd have seen it. Like Amar Akbar Anthony, song sequences are there because it looks over the Queen's necklace, which is Marine Drive. So I used to take my uh, German Shepherd there because he was an Irani Parsi guy who owned it. He would let me take the dog up. So it was great fun to take the dog up. Oh. And, you know, yeah. Uh, and then again, so I think Mumbai was going in the right direction because there were certain people like that. We had uh, one of these beer bars which allowed that recently. His name uh, I've forgotten. One of these new age beer bars. To take your pets along, but if you go to Czech Republic and places like that, everywhere the, the dogs dogs allowed on the yeah, subway, yeah. in the restaurants, cafes, you don't worry, everywhere. Yeah, no, that's true. Delhi, there are some places now um, which are allowing that, but I think we need to have far more inclusivity in where we can take. I mean, for a dog parent, dogs are family members, right? So I find ridiculous that most of the places you can't take your dogs. It's crazy. And I, I find ridiculous they don't invite the dogs. Somebody called me for a 50th birthday party recently. And I sent a message saying, but you've not invited my dogs. I was, just, <laughs> I was like, you know, come on. I mean, you should at least, it's disrespectful. You, it uh, is very disrespectful. And Himali, what on the other side? When they come home and they say, can you hold, hold your dog or put your dog in the room? Like, I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, would you say put your grandmother in the room? It's the same thing. I won't put my grandmother in the room because, I mean, what, what do you mean? I, yeah, I find that actually, I mean, see, coming from a space where I was, so there's a difference in being afraid of dogs and not liking dogs. And I say this yeah, because, that's true. you know, when that's I was true. growing up, I was afraid. Um, yeah. So I would be a bit more sort of sensitive to, the, uh, yeah, sensitive to I that. agree. But I'm not going to go and lock my dog. I will still yeah. do this thing of maybe, which is it's slightly inconsiderate, but I will still try and say, listen, I mean, why don't you try? Dog won't say anything. Give it a chance. But TK, if someone is afraid, then you sort of respect that. But if someone doesn't like dogs, they shouldn't be in a house in the first place. So, so we have some vendors right now doing the kitchen and all the whole buildings being done. And so these new guys came in the other day and one of them asked, asked me, uh, dog katega. So I, I said, um, Pata nahi, because I, but that's the right answer. You know, I, I don't think I should commit. Um, how do I 100% know he won't? So after that, this guy is just standing there uh, perplexed with fear, but I'm eating something and carrying on and, you know, but I couldn't you stop myself. You need to amuse yourself, basically. Yeah, because I'm sick of answering these questions. Like, if the dog was really dangerous, would we be allowing uh, the dog to just run around? And I mean, if he was a, like a man-eating tiger, I mean, just a small little dog. Firstly, and the other thing I tell people is, "Aapka vajan kya?" Immediately, because you know, you're a 200-pound man telling me doggy ko pakar. I'm saying, "He's dead." My Mary's 25 pounds. You're 200 pounds. Why is the fight as an MMA artist? If you were fighting this dog, you'd be so happy because you know you're eight times superior in weight. But it's, <laughs> yeah, it's but a, they don't care. I they don't get it. Yeah. And, and, and as for humor, as a failed stand-up comic, I can tell you they never get your funny turn of phrase or anything like that. That's a waste of time completely. Yeah. Uh, but the good thing is uh, my family have all become militant now, thanks to me. So my daughter is fighting with people. My, my wife fights with people. O over the dogs, I'm saying. O yeah, over yeah, people yeah. who are me. Have you seen these guys who are paid money to walk the dogs and they just, you know, they're on the phone and the dog is being choked completely. It's happened so often. They're just not paying yeah. attention. They're just mindlessly yeah. doing their job. You know, I don't know who to blame for that. You can see the small dog is trying to do potty and he's being pulled at the same time. It's terrible. So uh, on the other hand though, it's always very interesting to see like a good dog trainer training dogs. Uh, like I've seen this, I remember, I remember back in the day at PDP, at Pidashini Park, there used to be a lot of dog trainers and yeah. they would like do it so well and the dogs were like always excited to play around and catch the frisbee and catch the ball and it was yeah, very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, think, I think it's about, um, so with trainers, yes, but I would still, I'm one of those very suspicious types who still wants to be around to make sure that there's no cruelty. Don't hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right up. Uh, now, now they're being more careful, but up to say 10 years ago, there was definitely hitting involved. Uh, when my dad took our German Shepherd for training and all that after three, four days, because they kept saying, don't come. You know, huh. so don't, which is you understand that point. Don't come because he's distracted by the owner. But after some, I was like, "Come on, man! What don't come means what? What the hell? How do you know what you're doing with the dog? It's just yeah, ridiculous." Yeah, no, no. I, mean, I, I, I yeah. tend to get very nervous. So we haven't. Yeah. Yeah, so trainers, we've sort of always referenced and cross-checked and made sure that the trainer is the one who doesn't use force. Yeah. I, also, I, it's very easy for them to train certain breeds like GSDs and Labradors and all that because they're receptive, very receptive. Let yeah. them try with Beagles and, you know, some other breeds and then give us the same results because there's very had, easy. Yeah. yeah. We had uh, two boxers. Oh, my God. They were untrainable. Impossible. Adorable. Boxers. They just, but, they just run around, you know, non-stop. There's nothing you can do. The trainer goes mad. The trainer yeah, trains yeah. himself at the end. He becomes a Shaolin yeah. monk. And so they, exactly. So the boxers train the trainer very well. Of course. But, 100%. But those two were like the most, probably the most fun, delightful dogs we've had. So they were brothers. Uh, mm. Jack Sparrow. What uh, energy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Amazing nice. energy. And Jack Sparrow was called that because he had this one eye patch. Okay, he was a mm. white dog with one eye patch, and his brother Carl. And they were crazy. So no trainer worked. And I think after a point, we all gave up and said, "Chalo, chodo. It's okay. <laughs> Enough trainers have been trained by them. Let's let's just go with the flow." And I, my other criticism, as you brought this up, both you guys, is that um, yeah. the owner just wants to. Because of the economic uh, status of the owner, I suppose, or whatever, they just want to disassociate themselves with the responsibility of anything. So even the yeah. training, they want somebody else to do it and bring the dog perfectly back, which yeah. is no bonding. Mm. You know, yeah. uh, try to tell people during That's the true. pandemic, this is your best chance. Take the dogs off the leash. Try and walk with them. There are no cars, yeah. etc. Just see that whether the bonding is. You know, and it's not that difficult with most dogs. It's not that difficult. All you have, because ultimately they want to be part of your pack and next to you. There's no dog who's going to run away for long. But, but uh, is, nobody. Yeah. No, Sorry, but then they resort to dog walkers in no time, and then they can't do that bonding properly, and then they don't know why is my dog pulling, and you know, I mean, it's too late then, you know, after three, four years. I think mm. it's also a question of so sometimes I question why people get dogs. You know, why are you getting a dog if you know you don't have a personal connection? The dog is screaming on the balcony all the time. You think the dog is sort of a sort of a you know hindrance? I mean, I just don't get it. But I think there is a question about people who get dogs. I mean, I think we do have to address the fact that. There is getting dogs is a responsibility. It's not just all oh I'm getting this dog and this is it and it's all joy. It's mm -hmm. tremendous joy, but you also have to assume that role of responsibility and taking care of the dog for as long as the dog is with you. I think that's very important, and I think it's also very important to and I see this very and it's increasing unfortunately, Cyrus. I don't know if you see that as well. There are these conflicts in societies where people are like oh. don't do dogs don't do this. Oh yeah, and you know they are the dog lovers and they are the dog haters. And I feel like those divides are the but, problem. But in Maharashtra, the law is very clear that you're allowed to feed the dogs. The dogs that have to be fed in there. You cannot stop a dog feeder yeah. from feeding the dog. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. but to be fair, I think people who feed also have the responsibility of designating areas and also that you know. It's just a question of hygiene, designating areas, and just cleaning up after you're done. It's not that difficult. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. But the, the militancy of the other side is the problem. You know, this acting like like, like it's uh, terrorism. Your person is feeding a dog. A milk of human kindness, empathy factor. Yeah. You know, yeah. What are you looking at? You're looking at some terrible human being. It's not a terrible yeah. human being. I'll show you yeah. terrible human beings. People who drive slowly. They're terrible human beings coming up the one way. Terrible human beings. The city is filled with terrible human beings. Delhi also. So don't tell. Look at these guys. The saddest thing I heard recently was someone said, "Ye dog hata dijiye. Ye stray dog hai. Ye koi breed dog nahi hai. Hamare apartment mein like not looking good." And I was just, hmm. I like you. I just wanted to go and just slap someone. And I was like, "How? How do you even think that? You know, that's kind of beyond a conversation. I don't think that you can change mindsets." I just think people have to be more aware of the responsibilities and the rights. Himali, let's accept we Indians are the most racist people in the world. So much so that after humans, we are racist amongst the animals also, and that <laughs> that is so difficult to accept. You know, elsewhere in uh, most societies, it's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. I always stand up for the dog feeders. Um, uh, many of them are very meek and all that, and I keep telling people now, you just stand up. We have in India, if you don't bully back, you just get bullied. The people in India don't seem to understand any other way. You no, try to be democratic. There's no democracy, egalitarianism. Nobody understands. You have to shout at them back, and they are uh, right. I mean, no one should actually be logically stopping you from feeding a dog. Okay, I understand that you know. An act of kindness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an act yeah. of kindness, and they're angry. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. But if you don't get that, then, like I said, I don't know what conversation can happen. No, but but, I if, find if, if, but Himal, it could it could end well if people approached it differently. Supposing A is feeding a dog, B comes up and says, "Great, what you're doing, but can you just make sure it's clean here? Maybe I can help huh. you." Yes. If they took that approach, the person exactly. would start feeling a little guilty about that part of it, which is irritating them. Or let's keep the dogs in one area so people are not inconvenienced. Yeah. Which is all. See, all these things are possible. The attitude of the animal hater is very like you know, I'm on a moral high ground. How yeah. dare you? And then yeah. you know, you know. Was if you and me and uh, Silvery, our blood boils. But the, uh, the poor uh, dog feeder person is now like a victim, you know, like they're running away from the situation yeah, because yeah. they're so looking our, like they're criminals. Yeah. So there's there's one contribution by uh, Jay Arjun Singh who actually gets a lot of uh, you know he feeds a lot of dogs, he helps a lot of dogs, and he talks about this. And it's just, I mean, like you and me, he gets really infuriated. But I think at the end of the day, you have to try and make the others see sense. Say, because what's also mm -hmm. happened is I don't know if you've seen these cases where. People actually go around poisoning stray dogs. I mean, I'm just like, what universe are you living in? I mean, how do you think it's okay to go around poisoning stray dogs just because you don't like or you think that there might be a perceived threat? So I think there are. I think in general, we have to create a lot more awareness of both what people can do and the fact that there is a certain responsibility attached with feeding stray dogs. Yeah. Like you know, like. Uh, 
Yes. There have been uh, to that point. There have been cases of uh, people poisoning stray cats in my building also. So it's like a thing, yeah. dude. That yeah. people do. I don't know yeah. what makes them do this. This is so ridiculous. And they don't. And they don't bat an eyelid. There's no moral conscience. Yeah. They really think they're doing something yeah. good. It's just. And scary. very often they don't do it themselves. They get like a third person to do it. They tell the watchman, "Acha ye." Yeah. It's one of those things. Yeah. It's terrible. Oh, yeah. But. Uh, Silvery, I think as you said that your watch, the building people are trying to freeze your Wi-Fi for some reason. Oh yes, yeah. 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 oh no, the, the animal heaters <laughs> are everywhere. Yeah. I thought of a good name. I thought of a good name for a restaurant, uh, for dogs or a place where you can take your dogs. Wine dining, like W H I N E. Nice, very yeah. good. Yeah. Keep yeah. thinking. Now, we'll tell you when we accept the yeah, yeah. the right one. <laughs> so, on the right when you track. visit, <laughs> but no GS. If I hear GS again, I'll be very angry. Yeah. Uh, no, so, uh, Himali, uh, how long did it take you to write this book? If I can ask, like, how long did it, did it take to, to collect? Set, it, ask everyone to collect, collect all the. Uh, yeah. So, um, Depends on the writers not giving it on time. Don't start. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, like, must have been like, the logistics here, wise. But, uh, <laughs> so it took about a year. um i think so like i said i had the idea for a while but i started uh, right i started putting it together and reaching out to people when the first lockdown happened which was march 2020 and like these are our markers in life now first lockdown second lockdown but anyway um and it got published in january 2022 so the process has taken almost 2 years um but that also because it's 45 people it's 45 different contributors so yeah Uh, two years. Yeah, quick so word of the it, pandemic also because in the pandemic we had uh, both good and bad stories. The good stories, of course, being more people getting interested in pets, they had time to give to their pets, etc. But the bad stories of banning them every time there was panic, ki you know a dog is spreading or cat is spreading uh, COVID. Uh, Silvi and I have covered it on the podcast so many times, but three or four times we had these shock. Even the news uh, media stories came out, electronic media stories came out, and people just abandoned their dogs in parks and places like that, just left their dogs and cats. Yeah, yeah, overnight. and I think yeah. it was. The, the other sad part was that a lot of people, because they were going through this whole phase of loneliness, went and adopted dogs and mm-hmm. cats, presumably. And uh, when this uh, thing started getting slightly back to normal, they were just going back and saying, "Acha, hamne liya tha. Now we want to give up the dogs because we are going back yeah. to our whatever you know, normal work yeah. life." And I thought that's what I meant. I mean, how ridiculous is that? You just get in a dog because you think you want companionship for a short period, which is great to have companionship, but then it's a commitment for life. Yeah. it's not you just don't go and pick up a dog because you think that you know you want a dog's uh, you want some sort of company for 3 months or 6 months or whatever that also happened in the pandemic uh, there i have to i have to thank my father because the way we were brought up with the dogs you know we don't like other people touching them walking them feeding them you know i only we only want the family members to do that you know and we used to coordinate the entire day now he's not very really well but the whole day is coordinated about who's walking the dog at what time uh, will you do my shift will i do you know and the four of us were helping now i'm basically alone with my daughter but uh, so it gets a little tougher but honestly that that's a lovely part you know that everybody comes together because of the yeah. dog and it bonds yeah. the family Because yeah. everybody's most worried, and other people can't understand. That's all you guys talk about. Who's feeding yeah. the damn dog? But there's nobody in the house, so somebody has to go there and feed. Yeah. You know, and, and then a dog person, a parent will understand immediately. A non-dog parent will be like, "These guys are nuts," but that's fine. To yeah. each their own. Oh, yeah. Whenever I have to travel, for instance, I have to first make sure that everything in terms of the arrangements of who's taking care of the dogs—that's the most important thing—is taken care of. And then, I mean, but yeah, for dogs. Is parents, your hubby? Is yeah. your hubby as crazy about dogs? So I actually started. Um, uh, Appreciating dogs because I was married into a dog-loving family. Before Ooh. that, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. so he's he's equally crazy about dogs. A good uh, Indian male, finally, <laughs> excellent. Finally, finally. <laughs> love dogs. Yes. <laughs> As a breeder of Indian men, I must say I'm proud. This is a great movie. <laughs> yeah. You're the people pleaser, right? Or then desperately seeking the one? Oh wait, you're the one who doesn't think they're ever good enough. So much drama, and for what? Is it doing you any good? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm Chetna, your favorite positive action coach. Yes, I'm the one who has been dropping all those truth bombs on every episode. Oh no! And it's time you learn to say no to drama. That's also what my podcast is called. And a new episode is out. Every Monday and Wednesday on the IBM Podcast app website, as well as all major podcasting platforms. Follow me at Instagram and Twitter on Bored Brocha. I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me.
Uh, Silvery, should we go to the AMAs? Let's go to the AMAs, yes. All right, AMAs. Uh, Vikalp has a question. He says, uh, what are your views on hate given to people who buy breed dogs? Why do people make them so guilty? They are also giving good lo- good life to a dog. Yeah, uh, uh, let, let him Ali go first. So, you know, actually, this is this is a good question because you see a lot of this polarization over breed dogs, non-breed dogs. And I think the question has two parts. One is that it is very difficult to find homes for indie dogs. That is a fact. And I think a lot is being done around that in terms of adopt, don't shop and, you know. Uh, but personally, if you ask me, I would tend to agree. I think, I mean, there is a lot of hate given to people who have breed dogs. But I think all our rescue dogs are are dogs who've come from a bad past and are breed dogs. And to me, I'm not making that distinction. Exactly like he's saying, I think you're giving a dog, I mean, it feels a bit sort of presumptuous to say you're giving a dog a good life. You're also getting a good life in return. But I think, um, yeah, as long as you're actually taking care of a dog who is in need, I won't make that distinction. I would say that these are two separate issues. Yes, Indies need to be adopted, but any dog who needs, needs help should be given help. Absolutely. This is like, again, racism, no question about it. When you look at Black Lives Matter, let me, the philosopher, give philosophize a little bit. Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that white people are evil. You know, you don't have to correlate yeah. it like that. Yeah. You have to look exactly. at how this section is not doing so well and let's help. And not about how that section is bad because this section is not doing well. I think that's the wrong yeah. thinking. So the, the Great yeah. Dane is not the responsibility, uh, is not responsible for the dog in your lane who's been abandoned. You know, it's a, people yeah, have yeah, to yeah. understand that. Yeah. There is yeah. no correlation. They're all just lovely animals. And I don't, don't, know, don't know their breed dogs, right? Yeah, and, I know they don't know. They, they don't have this racism. They're just yeah. happy to, you know, be a five-star kutta, as we call our dogs. Really, yeah. I tell my dogs every day, you get treated better than anybody I know. Human. <laughs> my my dad used to tell stories of his <laughs> friends coming and saying, "Ki agle life mein we want to come back as your kutta." And nobody said this is a comedy. They said this is boss. I want a good life. Can we be reborn as a dog in your household? Because you know nice. we'll just put our feet up and scratch. That's basically life. The uh, highest compliment. Uh, yeah, but, but I'm saying it from our side, but exactly what Himali said, my God, if you don't know the love and affection of a dog, uh, the camaraderie, the connection, I do believe we are emotionally stronger than other human beings because deep down, you know, we just can't get broken as long as we have our dogs. We yeah. somehow, you know, we'll always be okay. Girish Patel uh, has a question. This is actually a fun one. He says, uh, Cyrus, if Silvery makes a joke about your He's dog... Vet, huh? yeah, yeah, he is. So he has that also. He says, uh, Cyrus, if Silvery makes a joke about your dog, uh, would you slap him and yell, keep my dog's name out of your effing mouth? <laughs> That's a, actually in all that in all that humor. That's an actually fabulous question because that is one of my sore points. People always ask me, "Do you are you always like? Do you ever lose your temper?" And I, I told him, Ali, this. I told everybody this. I do have a problem with animal issues and all that. I just go. My impulse goes fast really quickly there. And it doesn't elsewhere normally, except for driving maybe. I'll tell you John Abraham, sorry, I was on a flight with him coming back. He's uh, also half Parsi, a Liverpool fan, all that. We both love bodybuilding. So, you know, we were chatting. So I said, you know, he was massive. He was benching 400 plus pounds and all that. So I said, uh, John, you know, what if you hit somebody, you know? I mean, you're really big, you know, you really hurt somebody. And he said, no, you know, I, I don't hit people. So I, said, so I just asked him jokingly, so when's the last time you hit somebody? So he said, seriously? So I said, yeah. So he said, about two years ago, you know, my mom on Juhu Beach feeds dogs every morning. And uh, some guys came and threw stones at the dogs and uh, insulted her. He, and he was jogging somewhere in the vicinity. And he said, he went absolutely berserk. Abs- and I totally, I was like, thank you. Thank you for yeah. that story. And I never once said, Bob, be careful. You're a film star. You know, people in Instagram will come. Their career will go. After that, it will be Cancel culture will start. Nothing. I was like, you're my hero now. I love you. What a great oh, story. I'm now a big yeah. John Abraham fan. Thank you. Oh, for yes. Sharing. He's a genuine dog lover. Absolutely genuine dog lover. No question about that. And his mother is testament to that. Feeding the dogs from way before he was famous. Uh, I mean, that's the way they're raised also. You know, some of us are lucky that way that our parents were like that. But yeah. having said that, what a lovely story. And he, and he told me the same thing. You know, I'm a pacifist. I would never raise my hand, nothing. But I just can't stop myself, you know, when when it comes to animal defend in defense of animals. Yeah. As uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who's not been featured on the show enough, once said, uh, society is judged by the way they treat the animals. And, you know, I think that's highly uh, another really profound point. Yeah, it is true. Absolutely. Uh, Girish Patil has another uh, question. Uh, he says, one of my favorite human dog love stories is the Nawab of Junagadh. When fleeing to Pakistan, took his dogs with him and left his wives. <laughs> uh, what would you do, Cyrus, in a similar situation? <laughs> well, just respect, brother. Just respect. What can you say? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, no, not, not, not to put any wives down. I mean, but I, that's a really tough one for me. I, I've uh, heard stories of the uh, fire and a, a guy going back to save his German shepherd. You know, things like that. Going into the fire and coming back with 40% burns, but save the animal and all that. So it's not it's not one way, you know. They will do anything for us. I mean, that's almost uh, 
without yeah. they won't even blink but uh, we it brings something heroic in us sometimes which which we're not capable of but the dog yeah. can do that you know at least i know that i'm a very fallible human being but i know that there's something that happens because of the bond with animals which makes me stronger emily would you agree on that absolutely i think they bring out a side that you probably didn't know you had Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that happens. That happens. Also, a sense of I don't know righteousness or justice or what is it exactly? Where you don't there's I suppose people have this about religion and they want to go and fight wars about it and all that. But for us, I think it's the one time when we feel okay. I'm drawing the line in the sand. This is something I'm going to fight for. This yeah. is something which I which you know. Yeah. And on some levels, you know, I think it's quite hip. <laughs> if I dare say, you know, because I find all the other things to be really unhip. Who are going and fighting for religion and country and caste and community? I mean, what an idiot does that? He fights for animals who don't fight at all. This is the one fight I would take on. Yes, that's what. Fair enough. Silvery, will you die for your yes. cats? Uh, well, at yeah, least for the the yellow one, not. the I white stripes. <laughs> 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 How bad is Pawai? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there are leopards and. Not tigers, yeah. but leopards do come in. Yeah, yeah. Right. that does happen. Uh, Hemisha Morola de Silva also mentions that uh, then there are stories of uh, students from Ukraine who did all they could to bring their dogs yeah. back to India, which is also very yeah, that was very touching. To yeah, that. we've we've seen many of these stories of asking for help because the Indian embassy said no initially to getting the dog out. Like again. You know, I mean, yeah, oh, I mean, where do we kind start? Of inhuman too. But, but their point know, is that you yeah, know we're trying to get so 20 people yeah. in, and you you yeah. become 16 people and four dogs, and you know all that. It's a tough one, but you know, for me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, I would never uh, exactly. ask a person to leave their dog. Exactly. You know, I mean, may, I may be naive, but I think I mean when you don't leave aside any other family member, why would you think of leaving your dog? So also, the dog that. is fully in your charge. You know, it's an yeah. unconditional bond, and you you're in charge. How can you abandon that? You are literally abandoning the post. I mean, people again think we're being facetious when we say things like you know, like a child or is a child or is a family. But for the dog fraternity, there's no question. No, we absolutely. don't. I've had so many people say, uh, you know, the dog. This and I said, no, no, no. Listen, this is the pack. There's my mother, my father, me, my wife, and my two kids and my two dogs, and it's a pack. There's no hierarchy here. You know, yep. everybody is part of that pack, and we got to look after the pack. And that's yep. all there is to it. We never want to question, ki, oh, should I save more food for mom or for Mary? Uh, Mary, but because mom is <laughs> should not eat so much. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Tarun Kaushik asks, as Himali is primarily into publishing and Saras is in the entertainment industry, what is your opinion on getting our pets to work? I think everyone should get their pets to work, but uh, See, there's it actually is a good here. morale booster it, for the rest of the office yes. also. Because everyone yes. is playing with your. We office. had a wonderful leader in MTV called Sunil Lulla. I think he was one of the best man managers I've ever met in my life, and he was the one who where MTV really climbed and all that. Many reasons for that, but his man management, a with a different people from the peons to the VJs to the marketing sale, double MBA types was. Very good. And uh, second superb thing that he did is one day I had to shoot on Sunday, and I, I started crying about it. And I said, "There's one with the dog. Is bring the dog." And after that, wow. all the weekends I brought my dog to the studio, and we'd uh, you do our thing. You But know? you know, I and think it is true that dogs actually reduce your stress level. You know, everybody uh, loves him. Yeah. The whole yeah. the whole studio came alive. They're taking balls and playing with him, and blah blah blah. And you know, you change the energy. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not such a bad idea as people think. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Uh, All right, Himali. I I just thought of a question. If more? yeah, Himali, if you were to write a second book, uh, are there any contributors you have in mind who you'd like to uh, ask to contribute to the book? You know, I uh, Putin. <laughs> distract, <laughs> if you can distract Putin to write about dogs and horses, his two favorites. Yeah, sure, this sure. is true. I mean, that's that's such a contradiction there itself, right? But I don't know, Ansh. Yeah. I haven't really thought about it because this book took up so much of time and mind space. Of course, but of course, I think the point is that. for people like Cyrus and me who love dogs and dog stories there will always be more dog stories you want to hear like he said the john abraham story is such a lovely one i think when i see what mr rajan it's a lovely Rajan's one where indian men get beaten up by big film star from rich background <laughs> but That's yeah extraordinarily lovely but yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> i think there are lots of dog stories that are still to be told so sure i mean yeah Right. I, I, I like I said I mean I'm the kind of person who you know when I'm talking to people I'll be talking so much about my dogs and I'll take out the photos and you'll see their eyes Yeah 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 what so they do with their kids absolutely yeah, yeah. So, But then see if you have a fellow dog parent we're really happy to see the picture but oh, now yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you're saying I'm standing other people's kids when they take out the especially babies you know which are like sort of shapeless and all that and they, this is young Ishan I'm like what this looks like Ishan she's not a baby with a fat face you know but okay, this is somebody's 
Yeah. Yeah. Custard is totally different. He's got a Rottweiler with big jowls, and you know what I mean? Immediately, you'll. Uh, God, we see we are racist in our own way. It's a reverse, but it's still there. Yeah. Okay, last question. My accountant has okay. come all the way from Matunga. Okay, Tell okay. me I have no money. So quickly. Okay, absolutely. Absolute last. Uh, Harish Pakasar has asked, uh, Hello all. For someone who is absolutely afraid of dogs, how do I get over it? I mean, really, be I, I'm really scared about entering a house having a dog as a pet. So what do I do? I can, Himali, I can, because I've done this a lot. I have a very yes. simple theory, with, especially with kids. Once I had my first child, etc., etc., and we always have dogs. I, I tell the other parents, don't send them to the dog. Let them just stand around. That's yes. all they have to do. Yeah. Stand around and don't pay any attention. Especially with German shepherds, we're not going to go and bother them or anything. They're only interested in me or, or my mm -hmm. son or whatever. So it's even easier because that dog will not even come to you. So then you start, the child starts getting that, you know, the energy is safer and all that. And slowly, slowly, the child's curiosity will overcome the fear. Then you don't do anything. Just yeah, let and, them be around. Yeah. This and is what I also, said. Uh, sorry? sorry? No, I said the other thing also is you have to respect each other's space. Give the dog also time to come discover, understand you, stay still. Uh, don't force the interaction is what I would say. Um, give yourself time, give the dog time, and I think you'll see something develop there. I think a lot of times people make mistakes in trying to really rush this, and then the dog gets excited, yeah. and the person yeah. gets, you know, well, don't do it, that. It, take, it takes 25 years for a marriage to be somewhat semi successful, and you expect to, be, you know, the dog and you'll be friends in four seconds, although it happens as well. It happen. love, on, love at first sight. If you're yeah. afraid, then take it yeah. slow, but, but, but yeah, give it space. Harvespa is a Parsi Manas, so I'll tell him uh, he can, whenever he comes to Mumbai, if he comes to the Oval Maidan with me, I'll introduce him to dogs where, you know, it just, it's just a question of being around. It's a step by step yeah. process, and we'll yeah, get so. him, we'll cure him of the fear. Yeah. But 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 about wives and family members and all, I'm not the right person to help him. I'm telling him right now, we'll only help with the dogs. Uh, chalo. Himali, sorry, I have Thank to you. rush, but really, God send uh, meeting you. This book is fantastic. I hope everybody reads it. I hope you do more stuff. I'm sure you will. And uh, we get to hear from you again. Thank as you soon as so possible. much. This is one of the most wonderful chats I've had. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter, on Cyrus Says In. Or you can email us, even if you're not female, on whatcyrussays at gmail.com. Remember the days when our granny used to narrate once upon a time stories? Let's bring back the good old days of moral stories with Storytime Tamil. Hi, I am Ravishankar Balachandran host of Storytime Tamil Podcast. I would like you to entertain and educate your children with stories from Storytime Tamil. Tune in to the new episode sharp at 7pm every day on IVM website, IVM podcast app, YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh and I'm back with season 2 of my podcast to make you smarter. Smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid.